Welcome to the course on VLSI Physical Design with Timing Analysis. In this lecture, we will discuss about soft threshold standard cell library. So, the content of this lecture includes different types of standard cell library, what is available, then we discuss about specifically about the soft threshold standard cell library. So, uh, first of all, we will classify uh, what is the different types of standard cell library. Let us say we have a smartphone where we are worried about the power dissipation means uh, the power consumption of the um, smartphone. In that case, we are looking for some library which is low power in nature. Okay. So, here we are looking for near threshold standard cell library or we can uh, look for sub threshold or near threshold standard cell library. Then we have INW aware standard cell library. This is a uh, first category a uh, sub and uh, near threshold standard cell library. The second is a uh, INW aware uh, standard cell library. The, the third one is called variable PN uh, boundary based uh, standard cell library. So, now we have a high performance standard cell library where the, our speed is important compared to our power dissipation. Let us say we have a server, we have a uh, workstation where we do not worry about the power dissipation of the basically the IC. So, in that case threshold voltage is low or we can use nominal uh, voltage standard cell library or leakage aware standard cell library. Now, we are talking about reliability. Reliability is uh, uh, basically uh, related to the how the performance of the device behave after 10 years and how the transistor threshold voltage will degrade with time. Uh, like human gets uh, basically older with time, our ICs also get older with time and its uh, functionality at time t equals to 0 and time t equals to 10 years is not the same. So, in that case, we are looking for uh, basically a reliability aware standard cell library or aging aware standard cell library. So, similarly in case of uh, uh, satellite communication if you are using some kind of uh, ICs, so uh, there we are looking for radiation hardened standard cell library. Similarly, we have process variation. If you look into the variation into account, we can uh, look, we can design uh, yield aware standard cell library, we can uh, design variation aware standard cell library. Similarly, security is one of the important factor. Uh, so, basically uh, the IC piracy is also is increasing day by day. So, we should have differential type standard cell type uh, library or security aware standard cell library. So, these are the different variety of standard cell library available. Uh, uh, and we can create many more different types of standard cell library depending upon the applications. So, this is a small subset of that. Okay. So, here what we are focusing on a sub threshold standard cell library which runs at below the threshold voltage of the transistor. So, our main idea behind this uh, standard cell library is to design a energy efficient and performance driven sub threshold standard cell library. So, here power dissipation or energy is most important factor. So, whenever I am uh, looking for energy efficient at the same time also we can look for how can I achieve for higher performance below the threshold voltage of the transistor. So, what we are designing here we are designing a standard cell library which is operating below the threshold voltage of the transistor and we have two target one is it should be energy efficient that is the first target. And the second part target is the speed should be uh, as maximum as possible or delay should be as minimum as possible. Okay. So, these two target we are uh, going to design the standard cell library. So, there are uh, different sizing schemes are uh, there considering different process variation effect like uh, INWE, RSC and capacitance effects. In this case, whenever you uh, size the uh, basically the transistors, we consider uh, INW effect, RSC effect and the capacitance effect to design the uh, sub threshold standard cell library. We also use uh, new uh, layout techniques to optimize the library. So, if you look into this uh, sub threshold standard cell library, okay, we are considering INW, RSC, then the capacitance effect including those effects uh, and optimizing the library. 
if whenever you are including these effects your L length will be larger but we will discuss how it is larger and your uh, W should also be uh, increment uh, W with using multipliers and layout techniques. We will discuss all these three in this lecture. So, basically if you look into uh, the uh, main objective is to uh, uh, reduce the propagation delay okay, and delay variation of the subthreshold standard cell library. Okay. So, we want to reduce the propagation delay and variation of the delay of the subthreshold standard cell library. So, there are two objective one is to reduce the propagation delay of the uh, cell or the logic gate what we are optimizing and at the same time since we are working in the subthreshold region of operation we are trying to uh, also reduce the variation. Okay. So, now if you can look into this uh, expression here your propagation delay is uh, basically represented by this equation. If you can see here your uh, time t is proportional to your c pi sub threshold current because why it is sub threshold current because we are working in the sub threshold region of operation whenever we are designing the sub threshold standard cell library all the cells are operating in the sub threshold region of operation. So, if you can if I can write uh, this one in uh, another uh, word this is nothing but I by C. So, C C R is nothing but current over capacitor. Okay. So, this is current over capacitor. So, your I sub okay, by C. So, your I sub by C uh, is the C C R. So, uh, your delay is inversely proportional to CCR okay? means if your CCR increases your delay decreases. If CCR increases then your time period decreases, if CCR decreases implies your time period increases. So, what we are doing here this is the expression for the soft threshold uh, current equation and this is the I naught. Okay. So, uh, our target is to in this case if I sub increases and C L decreases the propagation delay decreases. Okay. If I sub increases and C L decreases then the propagation delay decreases. The I sub is exponentially dependent on threshold voltage. Okay. Your I sub is exponentially dependent on threshold voltage this uh, your threshold voltage is affected by two uh, nanoscale effects one is called INWE we will discuss about this this is first effect and the second one is RAC. So, we will discuss this uh, effect in detail in the uh, subsequent uh, slides. So, now your CL is uh, linearly dependent on the transistor width and the length your uh, capacitance is linearly dependent on the width and length if your width and length increases your uh, uh, CL uh, also increases. So, now what we are doing here is that we are discussing uh, this two nanoscale effect in detail. One first one is your inverse narrow width effect INWE inverse narrow width effect INWE. So, what is happening in this one you have uh, basically transistor isolation method is used during the fabrication process that is called a uh, shallow trench isolation process. Okay. So, what it does it enhances the electric field between the gate and substrate region of the transistor. Okay. So, it forms uh, one inversion layer with the lower gate potential. Okay. So, this effect is called the uh, shallow trench uh, isolation and it is used to lower the um, gate potential. But whenever we look into this one in case of a narrow width de uh, devices where width of the transistor is smaller what happens is that at, as the transistor width reduces your threshold voltage reduces. So, if you can see in this uh, uh, plot your x axis is the transistor width and y axis is your threshold voltage. What happens is that if the width of the transistor reduces your threshold voltage reduces. If the threshold voltage reduces means that your drain current will be higher. So, drain current is higher means that what will happen? 
so drain i can achieve high drain current with minimum width okay if my drain current is higher with minimum width what will happen to my uh, performance delay so if drain current is higher my delay is le lesser okay so uh, here in the first graph we are plotting uh, normalized width versus uh, threshold voltage okay so this is the plot and in the second diagram we are showing that normalized width versus the drain current okay this is the drain current so if you can see here at a lower width you will get higher drain current compared to higher width i'll repeat this line again uh, if you can see here i want this uh, this point where my drain current is higher okay i want this point where my drain current is higher so i am looking for the width where i am getting the higher drain current because my threshold voltage is reduced at that point my drain current is higher that will reflect uh, in my uh, delay and my delay will be reduced so this is all about my inw effect and uh, similarly i have another effect called rsc what it happens here in this one we have a uh, hollow implants to compensate the effect of uh, dibl which is called drain induced barrier lowering so what it does is that a non lateral doping concentration across the transistor terminal it leads to that one and this hollow dopants and the presence of highly doped uh, regions reduce the width of the depletion region and uh, what is the effect of this hollow dopants is that higher threshold voltage we can achieve at minimum length so basically if you can see here the length increases threshold voltage decreases so your drain current increases so it is called reverse short channel effect why it is reverse short channel effect usually whenever your transistor length is smaller okay usually whenever your transistor length is smaller at nominal supply voltage of uh, of a process i get a better drain current better drain current so that's the reason we do a uh, technology scaling however because of this rsc effect at low uh, sub threshold region as the length increases your threshold voltage decreases and your threshold voltage decreases and it leads to increase in your drain current so you have uh, basically the uh, threshold voltage is plotted uh, uh, across uh, different channel length and we are looking for the point where i am getting the maximum drain current so this length is higher than the actual minimum length of a process and this length is higher than the minimum length that we draw for a transistor in a process but this wider uh l is very useful to get maximum drain current if you have maximum drain current at this length then you can get a minimum delay at that point so what we are doing here is that we are maximizing the current to capacitor ratio so if i maximize since my t is inversely proportional to ccr if i maximize my ccr then my propagation delay decreases so i need to find out a point where i am getting the maximum ccr point okay so i need to find out a point where i am getting a maximum ccr point in the transistor level whatever the things i am doing so far is the transistor level so here if you can see the width whatever it will be if it is smaller your current will be lesser to get higher strength cells what we need to do is that uh, higher strength cells higher widths are realized using multiple fingers of optimal width in parallel configurations okay if you have multiple fingers we need to realize the multiple fingers uh, in parallel configuration to increase the current through the transistor but uh, the minimum width is uh, found out to be this point okay which is comes through the spy simulation so uh, we can have uh, basically uh, uh, l optimum point and uh, w optimum point 
okay so basically for nmos and pmos we have to do the characterization for l and w separately then we got uh, l optimum for nmos l op, uh, w optimum for nmos similarly l optimum for pmos w optimum for the pmos that width uh, and the lengths are used to design our standard cell library so if you can see here this is related to the width optimal width uh, so this is for uh, l uh, optimum and uh, minimum width are we are getting uh, maximum uh, ccr so this is the optimum point similarly this is the basically for the pmos we are not getting uh, large improvement but uh, this is my optimum point l optimum point similarly we can do it for the optimal length actually okay what is happening is that uh, here if you can see this point uh, we uh, in this process uh, in mos we are getting more benefit compared to the pmos okay so if you can see here the this uh, in optimum point this uh, um, uh, p2 point where you, my maximum ccr i am getting that is the best point uh, where you can do the uh, basically length uh, as compared to the minimum length uh, um, transistors so if you can see the your uh, as we divided into two parts okay till uh, p2 uh, is uh, region 1 after p2 is uh, uh, region 2 so if you can see that as the length increases vt reduces because of rac and your subthreshold current increases and your diffusion capacitance also increases so your uh, ccr the current over capacitor also increases so we are uh, looking for this point where i am getting the best uh, uh, maximum ccr and i am using that uh, length while using designing the standard cell library so if you can look into this uh, diagram this is the transistor level optimization okay of uh, subthreshold standard cell library what is happening here is that we are just showing one transistor okay so if you can see if i only consider the inw effect okay basically the width minimum width transistor will be created so this is w minimum okay so in order to improve the drive strength we need to do multipliers two multipliers are uh, multiplier is two here so this is if i consider the inw effect but if i use rac what will happen reverse short channel effect the length of the transistor should be larger than the minimum length possible in that process so rac which is more optimized in terms of uh, current over capacitor that is selected after the optimization so i have rac and uh, i have inw together so here if you can see my length is uh, larger okay where my maximum ccr is uh, achieved similarly i have w optimum where my maximum ccr is achieved so then we cascade the uh, multiple finger to do the optimization this is the transistor level optimization the same type of cells are used across the standard cell library sub threshold standard cell library more information is available in this paper you can go through it so basically what is sizing methodology of logic gates so there are two types of gates basically the basic gates like inverter or buffer or the complex gate like uh, uh, basically aoi or whatever so whenever you, we are looking for uh, inverter cell uh, as a logic gate uh, whenever you are looking for optimizing the inverter so we find the optimal width and length of a biased nmos transistor by maximizing the ccr okay so we uh, take a nmos and pmos transistor then uh, we find uh, uh, the maximum ccr then the second step is to design the inverter with the optimal dimension whatever we got from the uh, optimization then we will use the optimal length and width implemented using multiples of the optimal width this is done for the pull down network so first we design the pull down network uh, pull down network is your uh, nmos network we design it first then we go for 
the PMOS, uh, the pull up network. So, this is basically your NMOS network transistor and this is basically your PMOS pull up. So, the pull up network whenever you are designing, we are using the optimal length uh, taken from the spy simulation and width and we adjusted that such that my rise uh, propagation delay and fall propagation delay is equal. So, first we design the pull down network, then we design the pull up network such a way that my rise propagation delay and uh, is equals to the fall propagation delay. The pull down network will determine my uh, basically this pull down network will determine my fall propagation delay and uh, this uh, pull up network will determine my rise propagation delay. So, after I design the pull down network, I will design the pull up network such that my rise propagation delay uh, it should be equals to my fall propagation delay. So, you can have different ob objective. So, based on that you can optimize. Some cases people use average propagation delay to be minimum. Here we have taken the rise propagation delay equal to fall propagation delay. So, now we whenever you are looking for uh, complex logic gates, then we have a pull down network. So, the pull down network is a conventional logical effort with uh, effective uh, width of the series and parallel connected transistors equal to the unit transistor is used. Okay. So, conventional logical effort method is used to size the uh, width of series connected or parallel connected transistors. Pull down network can have series connected transistor uh, in case of a NAND gate. Okay. In case of a NAND gate, you have a series connected transistor. In case of a NOR gate, you have a parallel connected transistor. So, we can size that based on the logical effort. Similarly, conventional logical effort with slight adjustment in the transistor to make it uh, basically this uh, target rise and fall delay uh, equal, we can uh, find the sizes of the pull up network. First, we design the pull down network, then we design the pull up network such that my rise propagation delay is equal to the fall propagation delay. So, now we will discuss about uh, different uh, standard cell library is designed for comparison. First of all, we will design the conventional library where we are using the L minimum. Okay. L minimum is the minimum length of what is possible in that process and W is uh, uh, greater than W minimum. So, which is the conventional uh, library library operating at uh, operating at nominal supply voltage conventional library basically which is used at uh, basically nominal supply voltage library nominal vdd is used in this library okay now what we are doing uh, we have rsc effect rsc will use uh, what reverse short channel effect. Short channel effect is related to your uh, uh, length. Okay. Your length is optimum. So, it is greater than length is uh, uh, wider than the actual L min, but your W's can be greater than W min. Okay. Your W is greater than your W min. So, this is your RSCE aware standard cell library, RSCE aware standard cell library. Now, we have uh, basically here the width is changed, okay. your L equals to L min, but W is basically M times M W opt. Okay. So, then that is called your I N W E aware SCL. Now, we have a proposed library, okay. we have a proposed library, your L is basically uh, uh, L opt is greater than L minimum and your W is basically M times W opt. Okay. So, your M is a uh, integer number and uh, number of fingers uh, uh, M is a integer number basically it is not a fraction because it depends upon the number of fingers used in your transistors. So, this is the layout of an inverter. Okay. So, the first one is a conventional uh, inverter which is uh, designed at 0 0.2 volt 
and all of them are the same height cells to make a fair comparison okay all the th uh, four are same height height of the cells are same this is the height of your cell okay and this is the width of the cell is same for each of them for uh, basically fair comparison okay so this is the conventional library what uh, we optimized to ma get the maximum performance at this point in the second case in the uh, rsc case if you can see your the uh, length is larger then this is the minimum l okay l minimum and this is l optimum okay l optimum is greater than l minimum so you, if you, you, somebody can ask that why the pmos is not changed but uh, we cannot find that rsc effect in case of a pmos so the pmos is using the minimum l but uh, nmos uh, has a showing improvement with the rsc effect so we change the uh, length of the uh, nmos transistor so uh, now if you can see here in inw case your width is a uh, w min okay this is your w min and we are using two fingers for inw for inw now this d is basically which is using that both the effects together you we have l is uh, basically l optimum is greater than l minimum and your width is w minimum okay so uh, Width is W minimum. So now this last one is our uh, um, proposed library. It is done by one of my PhD student, uh, Priyamada. So she uh, designed this library. So basically, if you can see here, we have uh, basically in this library uh, we have forty-five standard cells are there, and we have different uh, uh, basically combinational and sequential cells. Uh, we designed whatever minimum needed for our uh, place and route tools so that we have combinational cells we have inverter buffer buffer has multiple strength for uh, different uh, uh, fan outs okay and driving different fan uh, loads actually so we have uh, 0.5 to 8x uh, buffers and inverters two input nand two input nor and uh, two input and uh, two input or then we have complex gate like AOI, OAI, those are the complex gate. So we have uh, some uh, other gates like filler cell, tap cell, tie high, tie low cells are needed. So those are designed. So then we have uh, uh, D flip flop, TG based D flip flop. Then we have uh, latch, TG based latch. So if you can see here, uh, there are the two things one is uh, this uh, library is designed to have equal rise and fall delay this is one and the second uh, point is that it has same pn bound uh, same pn boundary and the cell height is basically 10 track uh, library it is a 10 track library so there are some simulation results uh, we divide the simulation result into two category one is cell label simulation one is called the block label simulation in uh, this is done in uh, 130 nanometer uh, industrial uh, technology node. We have uh, simulated uh, with uh, all the cells with uh, fan out of for inverter load and all ISO area comparison was performed. All the cells have equal uh, area to make a fair comparison and we found that the conventional library and the proposed library we, with respect to conventional library we have 49 percent improvement. With respect to INW it is 38 percent with respect to RSC is 20 percent improvement in the performance speed. So uh, this is uh, basically uh, 40 nanometer uh, results uh, industrial PDK at uh, 200 millivolt supply voltage uh, these are the performance number improvement in uh, 40 nanometer we have very less number of cells uh, we designed uh, for comparison in 40 nanometer. So, this is the performance improvement. Uh, this is at uh, 65 nanometer, uh, 65 nanometer industrial PDK, 0.2 operating voltage. So, here we also get this much uh, performance improvement. 
Now uh, we will look into the block level uh, analysis. All the cells are designed such that it can be used in case of a physical uh, basically synthesis tool. So here we have used SCAS 85 benchmark circuit for synthesis using three libraries proposed INW RAC library. We have two different approach of comparison. One is area map de design where area of the design is made same to make the uh, comparison in the performance. So uh, performance map, map design when the um, your maximum path delay is constrained to compare the area. So here if you can see uh, basically your area map design, okay, you will have 23.1% uh, improvement in energy, 31.7% improvement in the energy improvement actually. Then if you can see your performance driven uh, performance map design, you can have uh, area savings of 30% uh, uh, and 52.6%. Uh, in, in case of RAC and INW library. So this is uh, power savings uh, basically uh, here it is uh, point out uh, how much power saving in the proposed library compared to RAC and INW library. So we uh, design a test chip to basically check how this uh, standard cell libraries are working in silicon. So we designed uh, the test chip at uh, in uh, uh, 130 nanometer technology node we have this structure which is uh, this part of the chip which is dedicated for uh, designing the st uh, sub standard cell library which occupy 370 micron by 270 micron and it is uh, basically reconfigurable ring oscillator based uh, designs are done to test uh, the standard cell libraries. So and the supply voltage is 0 0.2 volt and this is the test setup okay. And this paper will get more uh, measurement results from the chip. So th there are two uh, basically plots. Uh, what I am showing here is that uh, this uh, we can have uh, INW library and the proposed library. And uh, if we put it in a RO format, okay, reconfigurable RO, and we have tested uh, uh, the measurement time period of a buffer RRO across supply voltage for 15 chips, we did uh, 15 different chips. Then uh, basically uh, we can get 29% uh, improvement in case of uh, uh, performance, okay. Uh, this 29% uh, improvement in performance at 0 0.2 volt, okay. Since we have optimized uh, at uh, 200 millivolt, we are getting maximum benefit at that uh, 200 millivolt, which is a good uh, uh, thing. Uh, since I, our uh, operating point is 200, so we are getting maximum performance at that point. And uh, lower performance improvement at uh, lower, below the uh, basically other uh, supply points. And then then uh, this is the effect of uh, process variation. At uh, 0 0.2 volt, we have measured 15 chips. All the major results lie between this uh, uh, basically, uh, tip, this is my typical corner simulation, this is TT simulation, this is my FF simulation, this all the points should lie in between actually. So if you can see here you have 12% uh, to 29% uh, uh, performance improvement at 200 millivolt, the die to die variation is 10% and within die variation is 25%. In this lecture we discussed about uh, different types of standard cell library and we discussed about a, a sub threshold standard cell library. Uh, and uh, what are the cells there and what is this uh, design methodology we discuss in this lecture. Thank you for your attention.